Welcome to the InfoWars Sunday broadcast, and today we're going to be joined by Alex Jones as well as by Roger Stone. He'll be joining us in the second hour. We have a lot of breaking news. You've probably seen at this point uh, the uh, patriot, uh, I guess you could call him guerrilla truther, getting behind the Fox News set and uh, exposing the Bill Clinton rape t-shirt. Now, this is something that uh, Alex put out on Friday, and in less than 24 hours, we had somebody take him up on his offer. And, of course, he put a lot of money into the kitty to uh, pay people to get this message out. Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton are not about consensual sex that's happened with his so-called bimbos that she talked about. Now, he had a lot of women on the side that it was consensual. But the real issue is the non-consensual things that Bill Clinton did attacking Juanita Broderick, and Hillary Clinton attacking the women that Hillary had attacked. Doubling down after the fact, cold-blooded attacks on these women. That's why we need to get this information out, and it was, uh, it was really funny if you look at this video, and if you haven't seen it, uh, you can see it on Infowars.com. We have Patriot Storm's Fox set exposing Bill Clinton's sex crimes. We have that there. We also have the uh, video. Very funny to see it. We've got uh, Tucker Carlson uh, turned around and saw it. <laughs> he thought it was hilarious. I was rolling on the floor laughing. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll enjoy this if you see it. And, of course, it's interesting also that the person that is right next to Tucker Carlson that's in the middle is Abby Huntsman. And if you remember, she was the one who came on and said uh, after... Alex Jones talked to Piers Morgan. They came back and they said, uh, well, we should uh, challenge Alex Jones to a boxing match. We're going to play that clip for you. And she said, yeah, I'd love to see him shot, maybe by somebody in uniform. Ha ha. Of course, she is the daughter of a huntsman who ran for president, uh, I think it was back in 2008. It was a very short blip on the screen. She was working for MSNBC at the time. Uh, now she's working for Fox News. Very interesting. Alex is going to be breaking that down. This is the way we win, folks. You know, BLM, uh, Black Lives Matter, is out there violently protesting people. This is a peaceful protest. This is done in places where it's, we're told that the uh, public is going to be invited to appear behind the guest hosts. And it's just simply exercising free speech peacefully. There's no trespass involved here. You know, you can do this lawfully and creatively, and that's what Alex is calling people to do. And, of course, we're going to have him break that down when we come back. We're also going to be talking uh, to Roger Stone about the exclusive announcement that he put out today on uh, Twitter, if you see it on uh, The Hill. Uh, they talk about the fact that Roger Stone tweeted out that by Wednesday, Hillary Clinton's campaign will be done. Hashtag WikiLeaks. We all expect that there's going to be a major announcement on Wednesday by WikiLeaks that's been promised by Julian Assange that it would happen in October. So we're going to have Roger Stone on with us in the second hour to talk about this. And there's a lot of breaking news that is economic as well. When we look at what's happening with Deutsche Bank, stoking fears of another 2008 financial crisis, as well as OPEC finally throwing in the price. You know, they just cannot get the economy going, even with incredibly cheap oil prices. And they tried a price war against domestic producers here in the United States. They've tried using their political surrogates like Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton to try to shut down all domestic energy production. Even still, they had to throw the towel in. That's a sign of two things, the resiliency of the American economy, and it's also a, a, a sign of the fact that we have a very sick uh, world economy that cannot uh, respond to uh, oil prices being low. Energy is one of the key issues in terms of getting our prosperity back, as well as if you look at things like life expectancy. But as they went into this price war, and we saw the price get lower and lower, they still could not drive many American producers out of business. That's the interesting story. But when we come back, we're going to take a look at the economic news, as well as this guerrilla marketing program. Alex Jones will be joining us right after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. I've been waiting for this segment all morning long. We are rolling out the red carpet, not for Tucker, but for some adorable, <laughs> adoptable dogs. Every year, the Best Friends Animal Society helps cats and dogs who are stuck in animal shelters find homes. because we are surrounded by dogs and if there's anything that calms the human heart yeah. it's a canine and that's the whole point of the segment actually <laughs> it's just, they're with best friends and joining us live is the co-founder of the best friends animal society francis 
The establishment is now in total panic. And if citizens take action, we can bring down the controlled media facade once and for all. Citizen action on the street in the information war can win this election. The United States can then link up with the United Kingdom, Russia, and other countries that are leaving the global government and reestablishing national sovereignty worldwide. I'm very upset with the mainstream media. We've seen incredible deception from them. We saw Lester Holt be the third person in the debate last Monday night. And they've now had to admit at the debate commission that indeed the crowd couldn't hear Donald Trump when he was talking, but Hillary was hooked into the sound system and they were fading his mic up and down. I noticed it live on air. They said he was a conspiracy theorist. Now they admit it's actually true. He will debate coming up next at CNN and Anderson Cooper admitted CIA agent will be the quote moderator give me a break ladies and gentlemen this is out of control and now the mainstream media is covering up Bill Clinton's true crimes the fact that Bill Clinton has settled sexual assault cases before I have interviewed the women that he has raped there have been nurses and witnesses to it happening that rush into the hotel rooms minutes after it happens and the women are bleeding this is well known this is what they do and hillary clinton has always covered up for him that's been her her job you know a lot of men who are gay have a fake wife called a beard now bill clinton's not gay but hillary clinton is his beard for the fact that he is a sexual assaulter and a predator but look at him attacking innocent countries bombing belgrade bombing aspirin factories in sudan uh killing a half million iraqi children with increased sanctions worse than what the bushes did they are a crime syndicate they represent the old order with the bushes as well and that's why on friday's show i thought you know they will fire anybody off fox cnn msnbc or bantam that talks about Bill Clinton and sexual assault. It's a fact, it's come out in the news. And I said, we're selling the shirt that Roger Stone designed that says Bill Clinton, he was a rapist basically, Bill Clinton and the word rape, to try to get the word out. Why not have a bounty of $1,000 for anybody that can get up on national TV and not break any laws for five seconds with the shirt clearly visible saying rape. And 5,000 if you can get the audio out that you're concerned about his sexual assaults or it should be investigated or if you believe he's a rapist that he's a rapist and the evidence shows that there's a cover-up this guy's far worse than bill cosby and i'm not gonna sit here and watch this double standard within less than 24 hours saturday morning some gentleman we don't know his name yet but he's gonna win five thousand dollars you know email us sir got up got the rape shirt on tv for five seconds and then brought up the, this the sexual assaults now i'm still gonna pay the five thousand but anybody else does this you're not gonna get it use a bullhorn or use your voice but don't go over the barricade i know they're out on the street you're not invading their studio, but still, trying to climb over the barricade, once they try to stop you, I understand, you kind of use it to hold on, still is not right. So, you have to follow laws. They get crowds out there all the time, all the time, waving their signs, their Hillary, their Trump signs, whatever. They're out there doing it, they're asking for it. Go out there, follow the local laws, wear the shirt, get the shirt at InfoWars.com, that'll help, help pay for all the bounties we're gonna pay. Get the Hillary for Prison shirt at InfoWars.com as well. But regardless of what you do, go to InfoWars.com and print off the big PDFs we have of it and post those up around your town as well to create local news stories. And this is about the people overriding the censorship and control that's in MSM. It's a lot bigger than the Clintons. It's a lot bigger than Trump. It's bigger than Alex Jones or InfoWars. It's about the people taking action. The French Resistance did things similar to this with the V symbol. We've had contests before that had hundreds of newspapers covering it and dozens of TV stations. So we're going to also have a contest I announced later in the week as well, dealing with posting posters exposing the Clintons of different types, not just rape, Benghazi, you name it, and then videotaping it, putting it on YouTube, and then whoever gets the most coverage is going to get a big prize as well. We're going to put the rules up by Monday uh, for both these contests, but some people say, well, well, what happens if a bunch of people go out and, and say rape on TV? It'll create a giant tsunami. That's what we want. And we'll turn it into a big national story, just like Hillary for president, but even bigger. And listen, we're risking losing the country. Desperate times mean desperate measures. So I need all of you to take action, all of you to think about ways to do this, especially if you're in L.A., New York, D.C., or other areas where national news is going to be taking place. And there's other creative ways to also get this out there. Just do it legally and do it lawfully and check your local laws. 
and you will win the prize. $1,000 or $5,000. Now, there's a $100,000 cap. That's our budget. We think that this promotion will probably, you know, sell maybe that much t-shirts, but it, it, it doesn't matter. I just want to try to get this out because I I have daughters, I love women, and I'm sick and tired of watching these people claim that they represent women when they're such predators over women and they're so horrible. So Infowars.com will have all this information posted, uh, and we want to salute the young man that did this, and uh, also want to point out the New York Times has called us asking if Tucker Carlson rigged this with us. Tucker Carlson had nothing to do with this. I announced this yesterday on the air, and whoever this young man is went and did this because it was one of the first live shows on the street. That's what happened. But they're already looking for someone so they can burn Tucker Carlson and get him kicked off Fox. Because there's already been a coup at Fox with the whole Roger Ailes thing. And now they're trying to take over the rest of the media. It's really happening. I mean, as of today, the U.N. has got authority over the web. And so a really dark time of oppression is, is, is unfolding. It's time for us on the ground to get the word out, not just on the Internet. I'm Alan Schoen signing off for InfoWars.com. I want to salute you all out there that are fighting for liberty, the true liberals, the true constitutionalists. If you're watching or listening to this transmission, you are the resistance. And again, you can see that article at Infowars.com. Patriot Storms Fox said exposing Bill Clinton's sex crimes. And as Alex was pointing out, they're trying to attack Tucker Carlson over that. He saw some humor in that. You know, the way this breaks down is to take a look at the way the Daily Mail reported this. Headline, man shouts, Bill Clinton is a rapist on live TV to win $5,000 from 9-11 conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. And this writer, Jennifer Smith, for uh, the Daily Mail, goes on to say, well, it's not clear whether Jones has lived up to his promise to give the man the money. Understand the timeline on this thing. Alex announced the contest on Friday afternoon. Saturday morning, this guy does this, and... Within a couple of hours, it's not clear if Alex Jones has paid this guy yet or not. I don't know that Alex even knows the guy's name yet. I mean, we put it up there. Alex is good for it, folks. Uh, he's paid off on all of these contests in the past. It's just the way they smear people. But understand, when we say that Bill Clinton is a rapist, we're not smearing Bill Clinton. We're telling the truth. And we're telling the truth about Hillary Clinton, that she threw these women that Bill Clinton raped and sexually abused. This is not consensual. We have to understand the difference. He's got a long string of consensual bimbos, but he also has a long string of sexual victims behind him as well. That's what we're talking about. People like Juanita Broderick, uh, Broderick people like Kathleen Willey. And when you look at the people that are there, of course, I thought it was interesting that uh, Abby Huntsman was there. Remember this clip from a couple of years ago when Alex Jones went on with Piers Morgan? Let's play that clip. I don't care what the justification is, that you are allowed in this country to own a semi-automatic weapon, much less a handgun. But what do you need a semi-automatic weapon Bissinger. for? The only reason I think you need it is, Pierce, challenge Alex Jones to a Come boxing match. Show Huntsman. up with a semi-automatic that you got <laughs> legally and pop them. I'd love to see that. <laughs> In uniform. There you go. Okay, she oh, went from MSNBC. She goes from MSNBC to Fox News as part of the remakeover of Fox News. And, of course, she's the daughter of John Huntsman, the guy who was a tiny blip on the screen in the 2008 presidential elections. Stay with us. When we come back, we're going to talk about the tax issue that has bubbled up this weekend with Donald Trump. And big night here on Sunday, October 2nd, 2016. It's the Alex Jones Show. And as you hear Tower of Power saying, taxed to the max. Yeah, we're all taxed to the max, aren't we? Part of this distraction, and it is a distraction, talk about Donald Trump's tax returns. I will tell you why they're using this as a distraction. Folks, they want you to think about his tax returns and not your tax returns. Hillary Clinton has put out her tax plans. And it doesn't matter what income level you're in, from the very poorest to the very richest, your taxes are going to go up. I'm going to break that down for a couple of the middle income tax brackets. But they want you to just be jealous about about Donald Trump's taxes. You know, what they're selling is not hope. They're selling envy, okay? Or maybe they're selling rape. Rape of the economy, just like Don, uh, Bill Clinton has uh, raped so many women. Uh, we also got, go ahead and take the music down. We also have, um, we also have uh, coming up in the next segment, we're going to have uh, Alex Jones breaking down a leak from Hillary Clinton, throwing millennials under the bus, saying they're the children of the Great Recession. She talked about them as basement dwellers, as baristas, okay? That's what uh, she thinks of these people who are Bernie Sanders supporters. And I thought it was interesting. She says, well, you know, they think we can get free college. They think they can get free health care. You know, why would they think they can get those things? It's because the Democrats have been lying to them, promising them free college. She's been promising free health care for the last 25 years. It was Hillary Clinton 
as first lady that pretended that she had some authority to take over, what was it, about a seventh of the economy, the uh, medical industry. Now they're doing it. They're on their way. They've got a gradual program that they're bringing in here. They slapped her down. They said, you know, you tried to go too fast on this. We've got to take a more gradual approach, and that's what they're doing right now. But make no mistake about it. They're trying to take over our full uh, economy here, starting with our health care. But she goes on to say, I'm occupying from the center left to the center right. You know, I, I think it's very important that we understand that it isn't simply a left-right political paradigm. See if you can find a picture of a thing. Look for a Nolan chart, N-O-L-A-N. Pull up the Nolan chart. This is something that one of the founders of the Libertarian Party came up with a few years ago. And what it does is it asks some questions or you look at the positions of some particular uh, politician and you map them on an axis with uh, one axis, vertical axis being uh, economic freedom, the other one being personal freedom. Then you take that axis and if you rotate it 45 degrees, you get a diamond. And you, if you're looking at the broadcast right now, you see that diamond. And you can break that down. You'll see people who are on the left liberal and on the right liberal, okay? But what do you do with somebody that's like, uh, uh, we got like Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin. And we're told, well, one of them is an extreme leftist, the other is, is an extreme rightist. Where do authoritarians go on this simple line that they always tell you about the political spectrum, okay? It is not simply a line. You need at least two dimensions to see what's going on. No, Stalin and Hitler would both be down there in the authoritarian bloc. And you know what? So would Hillary Clinton. She's not centrist at all. She's bottomist, okay? She's authoritarian. If you look at that chart, she's down at the bottom. So you can have people that are on the left, people on the right. They give you some uh, political, personal freedom, or they give you some economic freedom. But the people who want to take all your freedom are down at the bottom when you rotate that chart. And, and it makes a lot of sense when you look at that. You know, Ronald Reagan talked about, are we going, not left or right, but up or down? Okay, you want to go up towards freedom, or do you want to go down towards government control, central government control? Alex is going to be tra talking about that coming up in the next segment. In this segment, the time that we got left, I want to talk about taxes, because they are crowing about the fact the New York Times went in and illegally got these documents about Donald Trump's taxes and said, look at this. We don't think that he has paid any taxes in the last 20 years because he had nearly a billion dollar loss in 1995. Where does that come from? Where are they making these assumptions? CNN has a uh, former tax accountant. He says it's wrong to assume that Trump's nearly billion dollar loss came from his own money. And this is uh, Edward uh, McCaffrey, okay? Uh, and he is uh, a former tax person. He knows what he's talking about, folks. Listen, I want to give you two examples in terms of your home mortgage. They say it's awful that Donald Trump took tax deductions that he's entitled to. They don't want you to understand the difference between tax avoidance and tax evasion. See, tax avoidance is saying, I'm going to take the deductions that I'm allowed to take. Tax evasion says, I'm just going to uh, ignore the tax, tax system or I'm going to lie on the form or whatever. But avoidance is not cheating any more than it's cheating to take your home mortgage deduction if you have that or to deduct medical expenses if you get over the massive threshold that they put on the tax form. Okay, if you take your home mortgage deduction, that is simply tax avoidance. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're going to get into the system, if you're going to, to fill out all the forms, doing it that way, there is nothing wrong with that. And when you look at uh, the situation that you got going with Donald Trump, it is not wrong for him to use the legal tax deductions that are available to him. Now, another example, I had a friend when I was uh, uh, working back in North Carolina who was building a home. He went to a home builder and he gave him a lot of money as a down payment to build this custom home for him. And the guy, like a lot of builders, got overextended on his debt payments. And the guy went bankrupt. He had absolutely, he lost all that money and a lot of money from other people as well. So my friend took him to court, sued him, and won. But the guy didn't have any money. And so what he got was a judgment for X amount of dollars for his loss. And he could take that a little bit at a time for 20 years. And then you lose whatever you haven't claimed. And for him, he didn't have that much money. It was He probably wasn't going to get it back, even taking it as a credit against his taxes, using it as a deduction every year for up to 20 years. And that's what we're talking about with Donald Trump. It could be something like that, a massive loss that he had, or it could be somebody that defrauded him or somebody that he sued and won, got that judgment against them and had to take that over a 20-year period. 
That is something that happens to ordinary people all the time. Just like taking your mortgage deduction, if somebody defrauds you, and I don't know what the uh, basis of this is, and we won't know if we don't see his tax returns. But understand that if you're looking for the tax returns, they're not trying to get greater transparency. What the Clinton camp is trying to do is muddy the water in endless complexities. And we've talked about this before, how Money Magazine used to for... The longest time, I don't know if Money Magazine is even around anymore, but I know back in the 1990s, they would get 30 to 50 tax accountants. And they would look at a tax return for a family, not a, a business even, not even a small business, but just a family that had some events. Maybe they had uh, some inheritance taxes, or they sold some stocks, or they sold a couple of home, they sold a home or a vacation home, a second home or something like that. Some unusual uh, events. And uh, it was a, a family that had maybe $120,000 income or something. So they had a good deal of income, and they had a couple of unusual events. And they would give this to 30 to 50 tax accountants. And guess what they would get? 30 to 50 different answers. And the answers can range anywhere from uh, ten dollars or $15,000 in taxes owed to ten dollars to $15,000 worth of taxes that came back. See, that's the way the tax code is set up, on purpose. A law that is sufficiently complex is the same as having no law at all. And it can be used as a weapon. It can be used as a weapon against you. It can be used as a weapon against political candidates. It can be used as a weapon, as we've seen in the Obama administration, against political opponents, using the IRS to audit people that they don't like, coming after them and even turning over their information to political opponents. And when all of this is going on, understand the New York Times paid absolutely no taxes in 2014. They did the same thing they're haranguing Donald Trump for. Stay with us when we come back. Alex Jones is going to break down Clinton throwing the Bernie Sanders supporters under the bus. Alex Jones here on this live Sunday broadcast with a breakdown of just the historical hypocrisy. It's so over the top, it's like it's from a dark satire novel or something. The rigging against Donald Trump, the lying, the twisting, Google, Facebook, Twitter, admitting that they're siding with Obama and censoring anybody promoting Trump, uh, the mainstream media admitting that they're spinning polls and engaging in deception, the fact that the debate commission now admits that Trump's mic was being faded down and was not sending audio to the crowd. The audience couldn't even hear him. They admitted yesterday that was true. Over and over again, I see Trump tell the truth, tell the truth, tell the truth, tell the truth, tell the truth. And they take his strongest points and they turn it against him. A year and a half ago, when he first announced for the presidency, he said, listen, I know all the loopholes that the elite have written in the laws. I will use those loopholes to bring massive money back to America. He gave examples. He said, look, the Chinese have a 10% lower tax on corporations than we do. That makes all the corporations move there. We cut it down to their level or lower, they'll all come back, or a lot will. And then they said, oh my God, he doesn't want corporations to pay taxes. No, he wants to bring them back here. We have the highest corporate income tax, income tax in the world. Now, the latest thing is they have illegally gotten his tax returns from 1995, where he admittedly had a $900 million loss and declared bankruptcy in some of his companies. Each new venture he does is a new corporation. 90 plus percent of his ventures have been very successful. Most business people, one out of six is successful. He's nine out of 10 or even better, but he has declared bankruptcy four times. And he used that loss then to move forward over the next few years and basically not pay taxes because of the loss. That's what all the rich do. Google pays 3% tax. Uh, if you go to General Electric, 2 to 3% tax again. Some major global corporations pay zero tax. And then the leaders of those corporations do the exact same loopholes that Trump does and pay near zero. The truth is, Trump isn't elitist enough to pay no taxes like they do. The upper super billionaire crust are the ones. In fact, famous billionaires have said, taxes, those are for poor people. Those are for commoners. He wants to end all that where China has a currency 35% beneath ours devalued, which again makes people go build things there because it's cheaper to manufacture. They've got energy three times cheaper than us because they have all these dirty coal power plants. They're shutting down our clean ones. These are simple things. Let us have cheap energy. 
Let us have lower taxes. Let us have uh, a, a currency that isn't undervalued against others, and we will explode. America's been the engine of the world. We've been sold out. But they take this and they spin it like it's a giant controversy because the system thinks all of you are stupid. Trump wants to cut taxes for the super rich. there my friends I'm telling you right now we're going to write fairer rules for the middle class and we are going to raise taxes on the middle class the establishment is hoping the general public is ignorant about the current global crony capitalist economic system it's time to wake up in 2014 the New York Times paid zero taxes. I could go on and on with example after example, and it's worse than that. Carlos Slim, the Mexican kingpin, one of the richest men in the world, basically controls the New York Times and is the majority owner. But I'm going to ask Bernie Sanders supporters something right now. You claim you're against mega banks and super huge corporations that have rigged the economy, and they have. And you're right when you say they pay almost no taxes, and that's a screw job. They've given all their money to Hillary. 98 to 2 billionaires have given to Hillary. She's gotten 20 to 1 corporate contributions. There's never been a more unified Republican-Democrat power structure against a candidate in history because they know he's a nationalist. They know he's not out to get America. And now there's this new recording. It's posted on Infowars.com of Hillary Clinton talking to donors, making fun of Bernie Sanders people and, and, and calling them baristas uh, and saying basically they live in their mother's basement. In fact, that's the quote. And that you're all a bunch of losers. This is what she's saying to these big fat cat corporate people who don't want to have a free market. They don't want competition. They want to sew the whole thing up. So you've got Sanders on the extreme left of populism. And then you've got this populist Trump, who's liberal in many ways, who you're rejecting. You're being chumped by the very same power structure. It's time for everybody to reach out to Sanders supporters with the recording of Hillary. And here's a clip. They're children of the Great Recession, and they are living in their parents' basement. So if you're feeling that you're consigned to, you know, being a barista... You're not a bad person if you've been forced to stay with your parents because this economy's been in depression for eight years. You're not a bad person because you're a barista. Thank God we've still got some service industry. But the truth is, that's starting to contract. And our wealth that was saved up over 100 years is starting to disappear. We've got to make America great again. We've got to put it first. The most important difference between our plan and that of our opponents is that our plan will put America first. Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo. To talk about how desperate the power structure is, look at how a month and a half ago I came out and said we should watch for election fraud because of our intel. Obama came out and attacked me. Hillary did as well. Trump came out and said we should look at this. They said, oh, he's crazy. There's no such thing. What is election fraud? Obama said. And then they announced two weeks later they're going to federalize the elections. And it's in Bloomberg today that they have got evidence of the election systems being scanned by outside groups, the Russians. So the feds are going to take it over. Ladies and gentlemen, the fix is in, and only a landslide will defeat these people. And that's what brings me to my last central point here today. A man on Saturday morning got behind the set, like everybody else does with signs, with his Bill Clinton rape shirt from InfoWarsStore.com, and he began to yell, Bill Clinton's a rapist. Now, he started climbing over the barricade, which you shouldn't do. You should follow the law, but he's still going to win the $5,000. But just to be clear. We're not calling for violence with the media. We're calling for peacefully standing behind the camera when it's in a public area and getting images out and audio out exposing the tyranny that's taking place. We're not like Black Lives Matter beating up people that have Trump signs in their yards, beating up homeless people for no reason you know, because they're white with George Soros funding and trying to start a race war. We are peacefully engaged in an information war that's having a huge effect and history is taking place right now. So we need to see in the next 35 days till this election a maximum effort because this is part of Brexit. It's part of Russia pulling out of the New World Order. It's part of nationalism rising again. It is a historic and exciting time to be alive. So please take action and realize that the people are on the march. The empire is is on the run. Best Friends Animal Society helps cats and dogs who are stuck in animal shelters find homes. There's not only evil in this world, there's good as well. And no matter what color you are or where you're from on the planet, you can promote individualism, free market, free ideas, free association, the classical renaissance enlightenment system 
that has developed almost all the good things we have in this world. We can stand up to this together. We can say no to this, but history is happening right now. We're at the crossroads, and it's now time for everybody to have the maximum effort. You know, I'm promising to give this fellow that did this $5,000, and I am, for getting the visual and the audio on air. If you just get the visual, it's 1000 A lot of people are saying, Alex, we're insulted. We'll do this for free. That's the whole point. It's to begin a cascade event. It's to create some excitement. Absolutely. Do it for free, then. The point is, is expose it. Be part of history. Take action. Don't be a spectator. Be the man or woman in the arena. I want to salute all of you that have taken action. Again, of every race, color, and creed, God bless you all, because you are the resistance. And again, that's the way we get the information out. The Hillary for Prison t-shirts have been a phenomenal way to get the information out. We've had article after article written by the mainstream media talking about Hillary for Prison t-shirts. And we still have those. You know, that's in the limited edition. We're only going to have that for another 30 days, and then it's going to become a collector's item. You're not going to be able to get it anymore after that, after the election. So uh, pick that up. That helps to fund the operation. It helps to fund our guerrilla information warfare that's going on here, folks. That's the whole point about the Bill Clinton rape t-shirt. Uh, it's only sold here, and but what they're doing is <laughs> they're not selling you hope, folks. They're selling you envy. They're selling you rape. Okay, Bill Clinton raped all of these uh, women, a long line of women that he has raped. And we're going to talk to Roger Stone about that in the next hour, as well as Roger Stone saying Wednesday will be the end of the Hillary Clinton campaign. What is WikiLeaks going to do? Roger Stone is going to join us in the next hour. We're going to talk to him exclusively. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and joining us in the next hour is going to be Roger Stone. He tweeted out today that Wednesday will be the end of Hillary's campaign. Hashtag WikiLeaks. So we've got him on to explain that as well as to talk about all the developments that have happened in the last, uh, say, 48 hours with the uh, Trump campaign. A lot of things have happened. One of these, the uh, tax information. I started talking about that earlier. I want to finish up with that as well. But when we look at the release of this information that Alex was just talking about, calling with Hillary Clinton, calling the millennials basement dwellers and baristas, Talking about the children of the Great Recession, as she puts it. Let's understand what's going on with this, folks. We look at another article that uh, came out today. Clinton announces today National Service Reserve for Millennials. I'm afraid that the people, and the Millennials are people about 18 to 30 years old. It's my sons are that age. And I really feel sorry for them. Because they have had their opportunities destroyed by the policies of big government, especially by Obama and Hillary Clinton. And she's going to double down on those policies to the extent that you won't have a job. You won't have any ability, and neither will your parents, to help you through college. No, you'll be dependent upon the federal government. If you're a good little boy or girl, and you go to the National Service Reserve, and you do the things that Hillary Clinton tells you to do, whether or not the market wants that or not, whether or not anybody voluntarily wants that, they're going to tell you that it's a good thing, because the government says it's a good thing. And if you go in and do what they say as their little slave, they may throw you some little pork barrel trinkets. They said you might be eligible, you might be eligible for college credit based on your financial need. Or you might be able to get time off from work based on financial need. Or you might get a modest stipend. In other words, they're going to barely pay you, if at all. They're going to find some way to not pay you. But they want to push you into this mandatory service. This is something that is so dear to the heart of the socialist authoritarians like Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. The two of them are always talking about the dream that they have of forcing young people into government service to do whatever they say to do because they want to control you totally. Understand, they want to put you on a plantation as their slave. And they may give you some little trinkets. They say um, Clinton will negotiate with higher education institutions and, corporation, and corporations to get those benefits. In other words, the government isn't even going to pay you. They're going to strong arm people or they're going to put out mandates and fatwas to force companies to do that. That's the way they're rolling with this. You have to understand, they're not offering you hope. They're offering you envy. And they're offering to rape the economy. Let me give you an example of that. Let's talk about what's going on with this. Because, you know, they want to misdirect you constantly, throw out these red herrings. You know, we start to look at some of the real issues. They say, oh, no, no, no. They pull out the smelly fish, drag it along the trail, and then you lose track of where you're going. 
completely destroy, completely lose the uh, scent that you were following down. I want to go back to this article from Time Magazine back in July. What would Clinton and Trump tax plans mean for you? Now, this is not a conservative organization looking at this. This is Time Magazine. And they're looking at various uh, groups of uh, people, different income groups. What would these tax plans mean for you? So they pull up several of them. Here's one right here. Singles and married joint filers earning between 23000 and 45000 Average income, $35,000. So think about that. About $35,000. And they say, if you're a full-time Walmart employee making $13 an hour, then that would equate to about $27,000 a year. So you'd be right in the middle of this. Uh, uh, you'd be kind of on the lower end of it, actually, twenty-three dollars to $45,000. Okay, what would happen to you? You'd get a tax increase under Hillary Clinton. You'd get a tax decrease under Donald Trump. So you get $15 more taxes per year under Hillary Clinton, or under Donald Trump, you get $969 less. So let me say to you, that if you're working in retail, you're working uh, at about $13 an hour, even at that magic number of $15 an hour that they're pushing for, then what that means to you is that the difference between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump is going to be about $1,000 a year for you, $984 a year. Do you, can you afford to just throw that away? And understand, that's going to be per year. So over four years, it's about $3,900 more that you're going to be pay, paying under Hillary Clinton. That's for the Walmart workers. What about people who are making uh, between eighty-one and $143,000? Average income, $112,000. Well, those people would see a tax hike from Hillary Clinton and a tax cut of $5,300 from Donald Trump. In other words, the combined difference between the two would be $5,500 and twelve, uh, $5,512. So if Hillary Clinton... Uh, becomes president, those people would pay $5,512 more per year than they would under Donald Trump, or over a period of four years, about $22,000. You see how that works? Let's take somebody uh, that is at the very top, okay? Uh, those people are also going to get their taxes cut. And so that's the way Time Magazine spins it, is politi politics of envy, saying, oh, look at this. The people at the top are going to get an even bigger tax decrease. Now, you know, the people that I just, those two branches, those two groups I just gave you, people making on average $112,000, that group of people, uh, they would make, uh, they would save about $22,000 over four years. The people at the lower level, the Walmart workers, would save about $4,000 over four years because they're making a lot less. They're making about one-fifth of what the other people are making. That's the way percentages work. And, you know, even though they have what they call a progressive income tax system, where the percentages go up as your income goes up, you're still always going to see a bigger tax break for the people at the top. And so the way the Democrats spend that is by using envy. They tell you, you don't want to vote for somebody that's going to save you $4,000 because somebody else is going to save more. So you don't want that to happen. Because the other people in the middle class, they're going to save uh, $22,000 over four years. And you're only going to save $4,000. So you should vote for the person that's going to cost you $4,000. Because you don't want to see somebody else get ahead. See, that's the politics of envy. It's also the politics of rape, of economic rape. You know, it's the economy, stupid, as Bill Clinton uh, and his uh, campaign staff understood the first time he ran for president. Take a look at the last one they look here. They look at all these different income groups. And the last one they look at is Uncle Sam. How does Uncle Sam fare under Hillary Clinton and under Donald Trump? Well, under Hillary Clinton, Uncle Sam gets more money. He gets $30 billion more. Under Donald Trump, Uncle Sam gets $545 billion less. Okay? So Uncle Sam has a difference of $575 billion difference between Hillary and Donald each year. So over four years, you're looking at about $2,300 billion or $2.3 trillion. That's a massive amount of money that is going to be pulled out of the economy, pulled away from small businesses, pulled away from individuals, pulled away from employees who are going to not see pay raises because their employer was paying more taxes or had to pay more Obamacare mandates or whatever. That's not even looking at the tax we call Obamacare. Think about the fact that we had 16,000 new IRS agents added to administer this tax. 
It is a mandate. It is an unconstitutional mandate. But it is true. It is a tax as well. It is a tax that goes from you to the private insurance corporations that got Obama and Hillary to write their rules to make money for them. That's a good example right there. If you look at the difference in just Obamacare, understand that people have already seen a 50% to 300% increase in insurance premiums under Obamacare. And they're hiding a massive increase that's going to take place right after the election. It's going to be a minimum of 50 to 60%. We see insurance, uh, Obamacare uh, markets, as they call them, quote unquote, that are going to be going bankrupt. There's an article up on Drudge Report today about uh, one state where the Obamacare institutions are going to be going bankrupt unless they have a 50 to 60 percent increase right away. You have to understand this is something that was written by the big insurance companies for the benefit of the big insurance companies. And you should understand how this is going to take even more money out of the economy. The people at the very lowest, they again, they sell this idea of envy, hoping that you don't look and the fact that the people at the very lowest level, they talk about Donald Trump having three different tax rates that he's proposed here. No, he's actually got four. The fourth rate is zero. That's the people that are, that are making taxes that are uh, a, a, a single person making $25,000 a year pays zero taxes under his plan. But you don't want that because somebody that's making a lot more money than you is going to get more of a tax savings than you do. So you should shut this whole thing down and pay Hillary more taxes. See, that's the kind of thinking that keeps people in the basement, literally in the basement, in their parents' basement, because they can't have uh, any opportunity. You understand, these are also the people who are bringing in so many foreign workers that the young people, the millennials, can't find part-time work in the first place. That is, I think, one of the biggest crimes. The fact that they have shut that down to them just as they have made it more expensive for them to get cars and made it impossible for them to find jobs because they're competing with adults looking for full-time work that aren't even it's American Sunday. citizens. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. In the next segment, we're going to be joined by Roger Stone. He's going to give us his exclusive update on, his, on what's going to happen on Wednesday. Now, he tweeted out and referenced WikiLeaks that on Wednesday... The Hillary Clinton campaign will be done, will be finished. So we're going to talk, about, talk to him about uh, what he sees happening on Wednesday with Julian Assange and about the other things that have broken over the last 48 hours. There's been a lot of news coming out. As I was talking about in the last segment, again, pulling out this information about Donald Trump's tax returns, saying that he had nearly a billion dollars in a loss, and we don't know whether that was a failed business or whether that was a uh, defrauding. Uh, somebody uh, defrauded him and he got a lawsuit, as I pointed out. I know someone who had a situation like trying to build a home. They uh, had the builder go bankrupt, abscond with a lot of their money, as did many other uh, potential homeowners. They were never able to get that money back from them, even though it was owed to them. But when you have a loss like that, whether it is a business loss or whether it is uh, something like that, we are defrauded. You have to take that uh, each year. And you can take up to 20 years to take that off. But you can the only way that you can recover that if somebody doesn't pay you is to take that gradually. So we don't know what the case is with uh, Donald Trump's situation. But what they're trying to do is get you angry about the fact that he took a tax deduction. Do you take your mortgage deduction? Would you like to have more deductions? Do you use all the mortgage deductions that you have? If not, why not? And if you don't, you're foolish. You're foolish not to do that. If it's a legal deduction, you should be able to. They're not accusing him of cheating. They're not accusing him of tax evasion. Okay, It's, it's a difference between a legal profit that you make in a business and money laundering. Do you understand the difference there? You can have a straight up business where you are operating publicly and making a profit, uh, doing all the paperwork for the government, paying them their taxes, so forth and so on. That's a, a profit, okay? You're trying to avoid paying taxes. But if you've got a criminal operation, like you're selling drugs or something, okay? And again, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying that drugs, selling drugs should be criminal. I'm not in favor of prohibition, but let's, whatever, whatever it is that you're doing, okay? I'll say there's something violent. Uh, but it's illegal. And so what you do is you try to wash that money and make it look like it's legal. So you uh, open up a restaurant or something and you channel your illegal money through there or you channel it through HSBC where FBI Director Comey used to sit on the board of directors. Uh, you channel it through those people uh, just like uh, El Chapo did when he had his own checkout window at HSBC. You clean up your money and then you get it in. That's the difference that we're talking about here, folks. We're talking about the difference between having a profit and 
doing something criminal like money laundering. It is not wrong to try to avoid taxes. And yet the New York Times tries to imply that there's something wrong. In 2014, paid no taxes at all. Let me read you this quote from Forbes magazine that Breitbart puts out. They say, for the tax year 2014, the New York Times paid no taxes, yet got an income tax refund of $3 million, even though they had a pre-tax profit of $29.9 million. You understand that? They got a profit before taxes of $30 million. They get a refund of three. And as Forbes says, think about that. Their post-tax profit was higher than their pre-tax profit, New York Times. They say the explanation for this is in their 2014 annual report. The effective tax rate for 2014, they said, was favorably affected by approximately $21.1 million for the reversal of revenues for uncertain tax positions due to the lapse of applicable statutes of limitations. Got that? Do you understand that? Do you understand that complexity? I don't understand it. Let me read that to you a second time. And say, If you don't know what that is, read it a second time. Well, I will read it a second time. The reversal of revenues for uncertain tax positions due to a lapse of applicable statutes of limitations. I have no idea what that means. But that's the games that they play. And that's the games the New York Times plays to make sure that they don't, not only don't pay any taxes, but they have a profit of $30 million and they get back another $3 million. See, that's the hypocrisy. And at the same time, they put this out there because they don't want you to focus on the fact that Donald Trump is proposing the largest tax simplification and tax reduction ever proposed. Bigger than JFK. Bigger than Ronald Reagan. And yet Hillary Clinton wants to raise taxes to the highest rate that we have seen across the board. She wants to raise taxes on everyone. And at the top end, go up to 65%. That's what I call trickle-down poverty, folks. Those higher rates are going to trickle down to you as well. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host here live, and we're going to be joined now by Roger Stone. He had a tweet that went out today saying, by Wednesday, the Clinton campaign will be done. Hashtag WikiLeaks. So we want to break that down with Roger Stone. Joining us now is Roger Stone. Welcome, Roger. Great to be here. Okay, tell us uh, what is coming. Well, first, before we do that, let's talk about uh, what happened yesterday with the guerrilla marketing that we saw there on Fox News. Uh, that was an amazing piece right there, and I think that tells us a lot about the power of the mass public in terms of the awakening of people and also getting this information out to people in unusual ways. I think that was very effective. What, what's your take on that? What it shows, David, is that one person can make a difference. Yes. The mainstream media wants to obliterate the narrative uh, about Bill Clinton and his sexual uh, uh, predator nature. The fact that he has sexually assaulted or bitten or raped or exposed himself to at least 13 women that we know of. Uh, and that his wife, Hillary Clinton, has been an accessory after the fact in every one of those assaults because she is the one who uh, intimidates, threatens, discredits, and bullies his victims. In the case of Juanita Broderick, a very brave lady, um, she intimidated uh, Juanita to her face. Now, the mainstream media hates this narrative, and therefore they want to transpose it into affairs. You yeah. know, Bill's marriage. This has nothing to do with affairs or his marriage. It is not about marital infidelity it is not about adultery it is not about girlfriends or mistresses or one night stands or what my friends in philadelphia call the guma it's about sexual assault it's about violence against women and um for example uh michael smirkanish of cnn has a lively saturday show i've been on the show a number of times Michael's a very smart guy, a longtime uh, uh, associate and friend of mine. In fact, he was once the right-hand man to Philadelphia Mayor Frank Rizzo. Uh, I got him a position uh, as a high-level appointee in the Reagan administration, where he was the regional administrator for housing and urban development, a job from which he was ultimately fired because he could not follow directions. It's not that Michael has a lot of enemies, it's just that all of his friends hate him. In any <laughs> event, uh, yesterday on uh, CNN, when a surrogate for Donald Trump began to discuss 
Bill's epic sexual abuse of women, Michael kept referring to it as infidelities and, yeah. you know, about his marriage. This is intellectually dishonest. Now, Michael Smirkanish is a lawyer. In fact, he's a very fine lawyer, and he knows the difference between infidelity and rape. If he doesn't, he should refresh himself on the rape statutes in Pennsylvania state law. So this is a phony narrative put forward by the mainstream media. This is why it's important that people who support the cause, who are enlisted in the info war, get on the media and take up Alex Jones's challenge to get on television wearing your rape t-shirt, your iconic Bill Clinton rape t-shirt, written about in Time magazine, available at the Infowars.com store, available at the StoneColdTruth.com store. And by the way, Alex and I have agreed to donate a portion of the proceeds to a rape crisis center. Uh, but it's important that people take Alex up on this challenge. The mainstream media is not going to report this honestly. Well, absolutely. You know, you go back and you look at what happened in the 1990s and the impeachment of Bill Clinton. And the impeachment technically was for committing perjury. And I've tried to explain that many times to my liberal friends. They say, oh, they just went after him because he had an affair. Everybody has affairs, so forth and so on. They always make it about consensual sex, not about the sexual assault, not about the rape. They've always covered that up. That's one of the reasons why they focus so heavily on Monica Lewinsky, because that was a yeah. consensual issue. But they, they would completely avoid... Juanita Broderick or Kathleen Willey or all these other women that you mentioned, th uh, 13 or so women that he has that have come out and said that they were raped by him without consent. And that's a huge difference there. But that's why we have the rape T-shirt. That is the point that needs to be driven home. It is not about consensual uh, sex. It is not about some guy who's a philanderer. You know what? My friends will also look at this and say, oh, you know, well, yeah, he's a real stud. It's very, uh, you know, he may be a philanderer, but, you know, all these women really love him. And it makes him even cooler in their eyes. And yet it's about rape. That's why we put that there. It is about rape. It is about the abuse of women and the fact that Hillary Clinton joined in with him in cold blood. You could say that what she did, I think, is, is even worse than what Bill Clinton did. I mean, you could, uh, what she did was completely cold blooded. You can't even say that it was a crime of passion in any sense. And I'm not saying that rape is excusable because some guy is, is passionate about it. But I'm saying that what she did was simply from a cold political perspective, damaging these women, as many of them have said, in a way that was lasting beyond the physical abuse even that Bill Clinton did. The fact that uh, Juanita Broderick says she can't get over the fact that she was raped. And she was only, uh, a, she was actually a year younger than Chelsea Clinton is today. So I put that in perspective as, as Donald Trump kind of pulled back and said, I don't want to talk about this with uh, Chelsea. Chelsea's a year older than Juanita Broderick was when she was raped. That never goes away for her, but it also never goes away for her the fact that she was threatened to her face by Hillary Clinton. Well, and she was bitten twice. Bill's, this is Bill's M.O. At least three women, confirmed by NBC's Mike Isikoff and confirmed by the Washington Post, uh, that he bites through the upper lip of his victims. It's, a, it's a, a very common disabling move for rapists. Now, I understand that the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about this. Sam Stein at the Huffington Post has a piece up now uh, in which he talks about the last person who brought up Bill's affairs. Now, Stein's a nice enough fellow, but uh, this is intellectually dishonest. The issue here right. has nothing to do with consensual sex, whether it is Juanita Broderick or Kathleen Willey or Paula Jones or Christy Zercher or Sandra Allen James or Liz Ward Grayson, although she changed her story after she was given a bit part by a, a Clinton crony in Hollywood. These women were all sexually assaulted. What could be more politically incorrect uh, than sexual assault and violence against women? That is the issue here. Uh, but this and yet he gets a free pass. They get a free pass for this because Hillary is a woman. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> Although I must say, it was a misstep for, yeah. for Donald Trump to post last week that he was considering inv uh, inviting Jennifer Flowers to sit in the front row. Wrong metaphor. Yes. Jennifer Flowers has a 12-year consensual relationship 
with Bill Clinton. Now, it is true that three Arkansas state troopers burst into the apartment of her next door neighbor, Gary Johnson, an attorney, and beat him so badly they leave him for dead because he unfortunately has witnessed Bill coming and going with his own key to Jennifer Flowers' apartment. So we still have cold-blooded violence uh, on the part of the Clintons. No, I urge those uh, who understand this issue and who are engaged in this great struggle to take Alex Jones up on his challenge. If you can appear on television uh, for a few seconds and clearly display the rape t-shirt, uh, he will pay you $1,000. Uh, if you can do so with a bullhorn and say Bill Clinton is a rapist, he will pay you $5,000. And I spoke to him earlier today. This does not have to be network television. If you get on television in Philadelphia or Cleveland or Detroit and we see it, then you can qualify. But All right, we got to go to break, Roger. When we come back, we're going to talk to Roger Stone about what's coming up on Wednesday. He tweeted out earlier today, on Wednesday, Hillary Clinton's campaign will be done. What does he mean by that? Stay with us. We'll be right back. I want to be clear. History is happening right now. The globalists are in total panic. They admit they're in panic. Their whole corporate world government, the anti-free market, the crony capitalist, is in retreat. And I'm out here with my family today, taking off the day, listening to Roger, listening to David, not doing a fabulous job. And I'm glad they're, I'm glad they're covering uh, the fact that you know, Bill Clinton's a known rapist who settled cases for sexual abuse. It's well known. Roger has been the tip of the spear with his best-selling book, uh, exposing this. It's documented. It's well known. But I am on the edge of my seat, as the listeners are. And that's why I just called in and said, hey, let me take over. I know they said it was coming up to get into WikiLeaks because... Uh, I had no idea whenever I was going to do a broadcast today with David Knight and take the day off that I was going to be listening that he was going to break this on our show today. So I'm so honored. And, again, it may get pushed off. Something may happen. There's been threats. Assange won't be up at the big window now doing it, you know, from the uh, from the facility uh, that he's staying at in London, uh, the, the facility you know, that, that's basically based on a foreign government. Uh, but at the same time, this is such a big deal uh, because – the fact is, he's saying something's probably going to come out on Wednesday. So Roger is saying this is the, quote, end of Hillary on Wednesday. I agree. And if the information is powerful, like all the other Assange information is powerful, the mainstream media is going to try to ignore it. So whatever information he's about to release from the Ecuadorian embassy, all of us, that means you, the listeners, you are the power of the show, need to magnify it, need to push it, need to get it out there. Uh, but separately from that, then I'm going to hang up and let Roger and David take it over. It's been a lot of time, a couple segments on this. We have already seen information come out that should bring the globalists down. We've got to continue to put it out. And the good news is, no matter what they say against Donald Trump, it only seems to blow up in their face. But history is happening. Just like less than 24 hours after I called for folks to storm national TV shows when they're out in public, uh, it, it began to happen. If the people take action, this facade will fall. We're on the edge of history. I'm going to turn this over to both David Knight and Roger Stone right now. But the videos on Infowars.com. Uh, with this big national movement we've launched to expose Bill Clinton's sex crimes. It's important for all of you listening to realize, just like the young man, we don't know his name yet, he's a contact us, just like the young man that took action in New York is changing history, you are changing history. You literally are the power. That's not, that's not me complimenting you when I say that. You are the power. You are the strength. You are the info war. So, gentlemen, I'm going to hang up, go ahead and take over, and tell us about this huge WikiLeaks info. I'm so honored you're doing this here on the show, Roger. Alex, great to be here. Let's uh, let's wrap up our discussion of the important Clinton T-shirt project, because I must say this. Do not break the law. Do not break and enter a TV studio. We want you to do this in a legal way. When the TV cameras are outside, uh, when there's an open shot, and you see it all the time at Trump rallies, particularly at Clinton rallies, at Bill Clinton's rallies, uh, then that is the time to strike. Very, very soon, we're going to be unveiling our next important product, the Bill Clinton Rape Whistle, which you will be able to buy at Infowars.com or at StoneColdTruth.com. So if you hear that Bill Clinton is coming to town, get your Bill Clinton Rape Whistle to greet him. Hundreds of people blowing their rape whistles cannot be ignored by the mainstream <laughs> media. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Roger... Uh when we look at this, I think it's important people understand, just like the Hillary for Prison t-shirt, 
People have to understand that it's not mistakes. It's multiple felonies. That's why we have the Hillary for Clinton t-shirt. And, you know, that's only, uh, by the way, that's only going to go for another 30 days. It's going to become a collector's item. You can find that at Infowars.com. That supports our operation, just like the uh, rape t-shirt supports our operation and supports this marketing campaign to get the truth out. Because just like it's not a mistake, it's multiple felonies, it is not consensual sex, it is multiple rapes. That's why we have the t-shirt, that's why we have the campaign, to drill that into people, because the mainstream media is trying to spin this constantly. They've been doing it for the last 25 years, telling people, oh, this is just an affair, he's actually uh, pretty cool, and uh, nothing to see, move on. Okay, that's what they're saying. But I want to get to the uh, what you tweeted out today about Wednesday. What's going to happen on Wednesday that's going to end the Hillary Clinton campaign? Well, I think it's first it's important, David, to set the table. As you know, earlier this week, uh, Congressman Jerry Nadler, a left-wing corpulent Democrat from Manhattan, uh, called on the FBI director to open an investigation into Roger Stone and his connections to WikiLeaks. Yeah, McCarthyism. Uh, yeah, it, it's the new McCarthyism. Yeah. Joe McCarthy, mm -hmm. Roy Cohn, Jerry Nadler. It's a yeah. matched set of, of witch hunt. Uh, I have been completely forthright here and in other interviews that uh, Assange is, in my view, a hero. He does not work for the Russians. Let me repeat that. He does not work for the Russians. There's no evidence to the contrary. Uh, he is fighting the deep state. He has leaked documents equally embarrassing to the Bush regime. Uh, and liberals loved him then. But now you see an online effort funded by Soros, run by the money laundering criminal David Brock, to discredit Assange. I actually saw a tweet saying, Oh, Assange's, whatever he releases will be fake. No, whatever he releases will be real. Now, an intermediary uh, met with him in London recently, who is a friend of mine and a friend of his, a believer in freedom. Uh, and I am assured that the mother load is coming Wednesday. Uh, it wouldn't be an October surprise uh, if I told you what it was, but I have <laughs> reason to believe that it is devastating because people with political judgment um, who uh, are aware of the subject matter tell me this. So right now you see a terrible scrambling by the Clintonites to attempt to discredit Assange to try to soften the blow. I have said from the beginning that I believe that Mr. Assange has all of the emails that the Clinton hench women, Huma Abedin, who by the way, was partying with Barbara Bush this weekend in Paris. Yeah, that yeah. That been quite a party. Uh, uh, proving that the Bushes and Clintons are together in a crime syndicate. That's right. Uh, and uh, Cheryl Mills, they thought they destroyed all these emails. They thought they were deleted. Bad news. WikiLeaks has them all. It's handcuff time. Because herein lies the proof of the criminality of the Clintons. Now, we've seen disinformation in the last 24 hours saying that Assange has postponed this, he's moved. I do know this. He does fear for his life, and he should. Right now, the globalists and the Clintonites are trying to figure out how to kill him. We know that a man broke into the Ecuadorian embassy uh, and got as far as the second floor before he was detained, but it took the London police almost two hours to respond to the call for Help. Even though they have a cordon around the Ecuadorian embassy, they've spent millions of dollars to try to keep Julian Assange in prison there. It took them two hours to respond to this as they were notified they had a break-in. Stay with us. We're going to be right back with Roger Stone and what's coming up on Wednesday. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're talking to Roger Stone. Today he mentioned that Wednesday was going to be the date for WikiLeaks to release the documents they had on Hillary Clinton. Remember, Julian Assange has been saying for a long time there was going to be an October surprise. It was going to be very damaging to Hillary Clinton. It was going to be the end of Hillary Clinton. So much information was going to come out that uh, to expose her. And I get very concerned, Roger, when I see this. We, we talk all the time about the clear and present danger to Donald Trump's life when he rises in the polls. And, of course, we've seen other instances where we had uh, Andrew Breitbart saying he had some major revelations that were going to come out. And the day before that happened, he died. We, I've been concerned for a very long time about Julian Assange 
safety as we went to the break you were talking about how there was an intruder at the ecuadorian embassy where he's been essentially cordoned by london police they've spent millions of dollars over the years to keep him imprisoned in that embassy i know they wouldn't take two hours to respond if julian assange began to leave that embassy but they took more than two hours even though they're posted right outside the embassy as you can just see in that picture there even though they're posted right outside there permanently they took over two hours to respond to the fact that there was an intruder there so i'm very concerned about it especially the early report said that julian assange was going to make the announcement from the balcony at the ecuadorian embassy i mean that sounds like a martin luther king moment to me yeah i think that uh, that they should rethink that because uh he is more valuable to the movement uh, alive yeah uh and um uh, look I, I don't want to overstate this because i know that my critics are watching i don't control assange uh and nobody does he is his own man and he is committed to fighting the deep state uh and he may change his mind about what to put out and when to put it out but my very best intelligence from a mutual friend who has uh, spoken to him in London is that the mother load is about to come uh, and it will be extraordinarily damning uh, to the Clintons. That's why you see this extraordinary panic uh, and why uh, you see the media now wanting to talk about Donald Trump's taxes. Now, there's a huge difference between tax avoidance uh, and tax fraud. Yeah. Donald Trump took advantage of tax laws passed by Republicans and Democrats together uh, and paid his fair share under the law. If he didn't take the deductions, then he's too dumb to be president, and I don't want him to be president. That's right. I want or, a president. Or he who, would be like Hillary Clinton, who has uh, the... the legal firm where Comey and Loretta Lynch were sitting on the were, were partners at the law firm. They used to do the taxes for the Clintons, so they put out a nice, neat package of taxes and then launder massive amounts of money uh, through their foundations and their network of institutions that they've got going there. That's the way they play it. And we can't see those that information from the Clinton Foundation. Absolutely. When you've got that, it's no different than taking a mortgage deduction. I mean, you want to try to minimize your taxes. That's what everybody does if they got half a brain. You want to try to minimize your taxes. They're not saying that he did anything illegal, but they're trying to say that it's a bad deal if he doesn't pay taxes. You've got people like Warren Buffett saying, oh, it's, it's a crime that my tax rate is lower than uh, my secretary's rate or whatever. Well, he could always pay more taxes, but that's virtue signaling from him, from Hillary Clinton, from the New York Times, even though New York Times did the exact same thing. They didn't pay uh, any taxes, uh, and, and I don't know uh, if uh, what they did to uh, get... I read the statement that they put out <laughs> about how they... and it was very uh, legalistic. I don't know what they did to uh, get $3 million back when they had a profit of $30 million, but that's the way the New York Times plays it. But then they criticized Donald Trump for doing the same thing. Yeah, you got to wonder whether they pass some of those tax savings on to the Mexican billionaire Carlos Slim, who yeah. owns a majority interest in the New York Times and who is, of course, the single largest donor to the Clinton Foundation Ponzi scam. So uh, it is uh, look, I don't want a president who pays more than he's than he is required to. This is the guy I want in charge of the federal treasury, somebody who counts every dollar, somebody who is not beholden to special interests and therefore could actually cut waste. If you're paying the government more than you're legally required to, as I say, you're too dumb to be president of the United States. Well, it's an effort to try to get people to pay attention to Donald Trump's taxes and not to their own taxes. Donald Trump has put out the largest tax decrease that any president has ever proposed, larger than, ta than Reagan's tax decreases. And yet Hillary Clinton wants to raise taxes on everyone. From the poorest to the richest, she brags about how she's going to put a death tax of uh, 45 to 65 percent on people as an estate tax, a death tax. That's going to devastate small businesses. It's going to devastate small farms. They don't have the corporate lawyers to fight these kind of reevaluations, and she's going to go up on taxes for everybody. She's bragging about that. The highest tax rates we've had since Ronald Reagan came in, she wants to reinstitute. They don't want people to see that. They want people to buy into this politics of envy and uh, get upset about the fact that Donald Trump took legal tax deductions. Yeah, this is, this is what my friend Lionel calls the rodeo clown media. So in other words, <laughs> don't look at the massive theft and corruption of the Clinton Foundation. Look over here at Donald Trump taking perfectly legal tax deductions over losses that he had. Yeah. Uh, it, it, is, it is really pathetic. By the way, 
I think it will have very little effect. Now the great question about Trump's taxes has been answered. So it's time for Hillary to release all the emails. Yeah. I mean, Trump's taxes are now out there. We know what the riddle is. It's time for Hillary to uh, to have the same kind of, of uh, exposure, the same kind of disclosure. And if she doesn't do it, I'm convinced that Mr. Assange will uh, do so. You know, another place, Roger, where there's been a misdirection is on Cuba. You know, trying to get Florida, Hillary came out this last week and made some allegations that Donald Trump had tried to avoid sanctions in Cuba. Ignoring the fact that it's been Hillary Clinton and the Obama administration that took down the sanctions that have been there uh, since the 1960s against Cuba. That's the most amazing thing to me. And yet, they have to do that because there's a massive Republican vote uh, that is Cuban in Florida. So it is a purely political move, ignoring the hypocrisy of the felony violations that Obama just committed with the violation of Iran sanctions, sending plane loads of foreign currency on secret plane flights from Switzerland to Iran, in clear violation of his own declaration of Iran as being a terrorist state. Things that well, were and, actually and, and, felonies. Yeah, Cubans that I know, Cuban Americans. My wife is a Cuban American. Her her father was a diplomat under Batista who fled for his life uh, because he was on a hit list, uh, and the Central Intelligence Agency informed him shortly after he was to return for um, indoctrination in Cuba that he should not go back to his homeland. He lost everything uh, in the Cuban Revolution. But Cubans that I know, and I know many. Uh, know that the uh, under uh, the embargo lifting, that those who do business in Cuba cannot partner with local Cuban business people. They have to partner with the government. The government takes dollars, they give worthless pesos to the people, and they use the money to reinforce the secret police. Yeah. People still disappear in the middle of the night uh, in Cuba. The Castro brothers are not uh, some kind of romantic Robin Hoods, they are totalitarian thugs who oppress Christians and gays and women and anyone who disagrees with the communist rule. And people uh, are still Cuba, fleeing that regime and the Cubans in Florida should be, uh, Cuban Americans in Florida should be very upset about what you just described there. And yet what Hillary Clinton does, as we see over and over again, is she does this misdirection. She comes in and makes an allegation, false allegations about Trump or whatever, and, and of a, something of a very minor nature to take away uh, the fact that they have created this situation uh, where people, they, they say we've taken down the barriers and yet they've established a partnership with that authoritarian regime is what they've actually done. Yeah, by the way, I don't think this moves the Cuban vote an iota. Uh, these are very informed people. Yeah, I think the so older, too. The older Cubans, I think, are motivated by the issue of Castro uh, in the embargo. The younger Cubans are not. To them, Fidel Castro, who's he? Isn't he a funny old man with a beard and a cigar? Uh, yesterday I spoke to a very respected uh, Cuban-American Democratic pollster. Hang on, me. save that till after the break. Uh, we're going to be, we're talking to Roger Stone, Stone Cold Truth, and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, October 2nd, 2016. We're real close to the election, folks. We're talking to Roger Stone, a Stone Cold Truth. And on Wednesday, uh, he's under, under the understanding that uh, Julian Assange is going to release the long-promised information dump to bring down Hillary Clinton's campaign. So we will see what's going to happen with that. And Roger was just about to tell us about uh, some insights that he had into what's going on in Florida with the Cuban vote. But before we do, just want to remind you, that these T-shirts, like this project we saw over the weekend, uh, the very right away we saw somebody take up Alex Jones on this uh, offer to uh, pay money to people who could get on the uh, news and get this information out that Bill Clinton is not someone who is just guilty of consensual affairs. No, he is guilty of multiple rapes. That's why we have the Bill Clinton rape shirt. That's why we're selling it at Infowars.com. Also, the Hillary for Prison. Get the information out that it is not mistakes with her emails. It is multiple felonies with her emails. As I've had many people, retired military, tell me, friends of mine, if they did this, what she did with her emails, if they did that, they would be in jail for life. Everybody understands that. The man at the commander-in-chief forum that stood up, the veteran who stood up and confronted Hillary Clinton on that, said exactly the same thing. It's not mistakes. 
It's multiple felonies. So get that information out to people. Hillary for prison, you know, that's a limited edition T-shirt. We're going to stop it at the election. So you've only got about 30 days to pick that up. It's going to be a collector's item available only at Infowars.com. Also, the Bill Clinton rape shirt, okay? Multiple felonies, multiple rapes. That's what these people are about. Also, to help support the operation and to support your health, we have introduced a new product. Biome Defense. It's the first time we've ever offered any probiotic uh, products from InfoWarsLife.com. This is a superior blend of 50 billion uh, live and active cultures from 23 different probiotic strains, all known to support digestion and intestinal function. And as you've seen Dr. Group talk uh, here at InfoWars.com explaining the importance of gut health, and we've seen this in a lot of recent uh, research that's been publicized in just the last few months that the gut is the center of your health. This is the center of your immune system. It's very important to your immunity, very important to help you fight off all kinds of disease, life-threatening disease. Experts agree gut health plays a huge role in the normal function of your immune system. It's essential for your optimal health. Again, get Biome Defense and Ultra Strength or Regular Strength today at InfoWarsLife.com. Start supercharging your gut health with ultra high quality probiotics. They're made in the US state of the art manufacturing facility, folks. That's Biome Defense at InfoWarsLife.com. Roger, you were just talking before we went to the break, uh, we were talking about Cuba and how Hillary Clinton is making a very feeble play for the Cuban vote, trying to get them upset about sanctions, implying that a third party that was tangentially, alleging that a third party that was tangentially involved with Trump had tried to uh, uh, do something in violation of the uh, embargo that we had there, ignoring the fact, of course, <laughs> that even if that were true, Terry McAuliffe, the governor of Virginia, the person who was the former chair of the DNC, same position that Debbie Wasserman Schultz has had to cover for Hillary Clinton, he ran Bill Clinton's reelection campaign. He ran Hillary Clinton's 2008 campaign. He went to, directly himself to Cuba uh, to try to set up business deals uh, while the embargo was in place and was essentially thrown out. But she brings this up even as we see them violating the sanctions, committing felonies in uh, Iran. But you had uh, some information about the Cuban vote in Florida. I'm very concerned to see what's going on there because that is a must win state for Donald Trump as well, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think this makes much uh, difference, in all honesty, even though it was plastered on the front page of the Miami Herald. Uh, a, an independent consulting firm, which Trump does not have any interest in, made an exploratory trip to Cuba to look into doing business there. They were notably unsuccessful. At some point, Trump reimbursed this company. I really don't know why. So Trump never did any business in Cuba. And he may not have even understood the implications of reimbursing uh, a consultant that he uh, uh, that he had uh, hired to look for business opportunities around the globe. But a very respected Democratic consultant, uh, Polster, pardon me, who is himself Hispanic, someone I have enormous respect for, tells me uh, that Trump has reached 34 percent of the vote among Hispanics, that wow. there was no drop. Uh, in just in Florida, mm -hmm. that there was no drop in his support. Now, Romney topped out in Florida at 28 and a half. So 34 would be sufficient for Trump to carry the state. And indeed, I think he's a couple points ahead. It's important to understand that the Hispanic vote in Florida is not monolithically Cuban. In fact, the greater portion of Hispanic voters in Florida are Puerto Ricans, Colombians and so on, and they are habitual, traditional Democrats. Uh, if Trump could hold a third of the Hispanic vote, which he's getting today, that will be sufficient to carry the state. Now, one of the concerns I have is that the targeting foisted on the Trump campaign by the Republican National Committee is designed to help Marco Rubio get reelected, but does not include white Union Democrats in the central and southern part of the state who are Trump supporters. Mm -hmm. They would probably vote Democratic down ballot. Uh, so the Trump campaign needs to understand that they're being given a Mickey uh, and that they need to use their own targeting to reach voters who are likely to vote for Trump, not Trump and the entire Republican ticket. 
Let's talk about uh, the steal the vote issue, because you're involved in that in terms of looking at the election, monitoring the election, looking at the uh, tricks that are being played. And we just mentioned uh, Terry McAuliffe, uh, governor of Virginia, who has uh, worked very hard to try to get felons the right to vote in Virginia, believing that they're going to vote for uh, the new felon in chief, uh, Hillary Clinton. But we've also seen just this last week in Harrisonburg, Virginia, a small town of 50,000 people. We saw 20 plus people who were dead registering to vote. That only came to light because a person in this small town was looking at the names and happened to notice one of the names being a deceased judge. So wait a minute, this guy's dead. Started looking at the uh, list in detail and found uh, 20 dead people there. But of course, we're told all the time, whether it's in North Carolina or Virginia or other places, don't worry, we shouldn't have any voter ID. Uh, that is simply racist to have a picture ID. We have picture ID for everything that we do uh, with the government. But talk to us about the concerns that you have for uh, stealing the vote, what people can do uh, to monitor this on election day. Yeah, I mean, you look, you need a photo ID to get on an airplane in any airport in the United States. Is, right. that, is that racist? I, I'm not sure I understand. But look, uh, President Barack Obama tells us that voter fraud literally does not exist. That is absurd. Excellent report on Fox the other night with Brett Baer uh, focusing on four or five people who voted in two states on the same day. They would vote in Indiana and then drive to Wisconsin and vote again. Mm. So, uh, of course, it exists. But it's important to understand the distinction between voter fraud, people not registered to vote, people voting in the place of dead people, people voting multiple times, and election rigging. That is the electronic uh, uh, manipulation of the computerized voter machines uh, that we know Hillary did during the Democratic primaries in at least 12 states according to an authoritative study at Stanford University. Um, I think this is a great danger. This is why we started StopTheSteal.org. I asked people to go there and volunteer for our exit uh, uh, poll program because the only way we can ensure the integrity of this election is with scientifically conducted exit polls in certain pre-selected key precincts in key counties in key states where we suspect that there will be shenanigans. If the results of the machines do not, mit, do not match roughly the results of the exit polling, in other words, if there's a wide swing, you have evidence of, of voter fraud and a basis on which Trump could challenge the, uh, the legality uh, in the outcome of this election. And that's so, very important because we've seen this happen throughout Central and South America. Just in Brazil, we just had the female president there impeached. She was very unpopular. She was behind 10 points in the poll, and then they had a lot of electronic voting machines. And on the day they had the election, they decided that on that particular day, they weren't going to have the organization that does exit polling participate. So they just took a powder. And she handily won. And we've seen this throughout Central and South America. And yet we see this uh, company, vote, uh, vote Sm uh, Smartmatic, uh, which is the largest electronic voting machine uh, company. They were brought in by the GOP in Utah to run their primaries. Our, our people at the top, both Republican and Democrat in the United States, are bringing in these electronic voting machines everywhere. That's something that, that really concerns me. Uh, and of course, well, and, and interestingly, David, these companies keep quickly changing names as soon as yeah. their machines are identified. So Diebold, which supplies the machines, well, for example, in both Florida and Ohio, they change their name to Premier Election Services. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it, That's all the time we've got. Thank you for joining us. Roger Stone, StoneColdTruth.com. Thank you, Roger.